Welcome to a new lesson, two variable data sets. At the end of this class, you should, you should be able to differentiate between one or two variable data. Let's begin. So what is a variable? It's an attribute that can be measured. One variable data sets have one attribute. You can calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. For example, the height of a student or students in a class. You can measure the mean, the median, and the mode of the student's height in class. How would you recognize it through graphs? Well, picture graphs, circle graphs, or bar graphs, uh, anything that can categorize the data, like histograms, are used for one variable data. When one variable data is organized, uh, in an increasing or decreasing order, we can use mean, which is the average, add all the values and divide by the number of the values, the median, which is the middle value, when you have an even number of values, it is the average of the two middle values, and the mode, which is the most frequent value that you have in that your data set. Now, this only works for one variable data. It does not work for two variable data. Now, what about two variable data sets? Have two different attributes or two different numbers that are changing. For example, height versus the arm span of students in a class. Now, you're comparing two different numbers to each other. How would you organize it? Well, you would organize it in a table, such as in this case, T and D, time and distance, or order pairs like X and Y in the Cartesian plane, two columns in a table of values, or scatter plot. Uh, all of those are used for two variable data. So let's take a look at our first, uh, first graph. Now, does this graph represent uh, one variable graph or one var variable data, or is this a two variable data? Well, the answer is, well, it's actually two variable data. Actually, it is one variable data. We only have really one number that's changing. And this number is right here. This number is changing. Well, on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis, there's no numbers that are changing. There are just names of the players on the hockey team that were that have penalties. So these are just, this is a graph that represents one variable. Okay, let's take a look at a different uh, graph. Now, is this a... Uh, one variable graph or two variable graph? Let's take a look at the axis. Now the vertical axis, notice that it's a gold scores, and it compares to the how many uh, penalty minutes does a player have. So notice there are two numbers that are changing, and therefore this is a two variable graph. and represents two variable data. We can summarize the one variable data display and the two variable data display in a Venn diagram. For example, uh, bar graphs, um, histograms, circle graphs, and picture graphs are always going to be identifying one variable data, while two variable data can be identified by scatter plots, table of values, order of pairs. And sometimes, tally charts and frequency tables can be considered as one variable data and two variable data depending how they're formatted. So now we have a broad example of uh, where a one variable data or two variable data can be used. So in this example, state whether each situation uh, involves in one variable or two variable data. Let's take a look at our first uh, first question. So NOAA researches annual, uh, annual hours of sunshine in Canadian cities. Will this represent an annual, uh, sorry, uh, a one variable or two variable data? Let's take a look at the answer. Well, the reason why it's uh, one variable data because it's, there's really uh, only one number that's changing, a number of hours of sunshine. And this uh, compares it to different numbers of cities. Now, this different number of cities is not a variable. It's just a location. So a good way to uh, 
Uh, so we could basically always kind of think about it, well, can I take the average, can I take the median, can I take the mode of the information? And yes, we can in this case. And we can use the display of a picture graph or a bar graph to find, to, uh, to summarize our information in um, a graph. Now what about for the second one? Study compares the length of two children spend playing video games and the time they spend reading. So right away, there are two variables in this case. We have the time of the children who are spending playing video games and the time that they are spending reading. So there are two things that can be changing. And that's why it's a two variables. A data set, time spent playing video games. And the way that we could show the data is by uh, perhaps a scatter plot. So there are two variables in this case that are changing. Um, and therefore, it's a two-variable data set. So, let's try some examples. This is probably a good time where you could uh, pause the video and see if you could identify uh, the if the data is one variable or two variable data, and what kind of graph can you use to identify it. So in this case, pause the video and see if you could answer this without um, without watching the video. So. Circle the correct type of variable data for each situation, then write how you would represent this type of data and the type of graph. So let's read the first question. Lenny collects information on hours a student's work in a week and a rate of pay for each student. Now, can we take an average of this? Probably can't, but there are, or median or mode. But notice that we have two types of variables, work in a week, so how many hours, students work in a week, and the rate of pay for each student. So this definitely is a two variable, because we have two numbers that we have to deal with that can be changed. So how can we uh, de demonstrate this relationship? Probably with a scatter plot, or scatter yeah, graph, or scatter plot. Now what about the part B? Norma asks the students in her law class, um, where they believe in capital punishment or not. Now, can you find a mean, mode, or the um, mean, mode, or median of this information? Yeah, probably you can. So that's why this is one variable data. Um, only one variable is changing is the number of students that say they are for the capital punishment or against capital punishment. So how would you um, how would you graph it? Well, you could probably maybe do a circle graph. And your circle graph or a pie graph uh, would maybe look like this. When some part of this class would say yes and part of the class would say no. So the next question. Regis collects statistics on how many hours contestants of who wants to be a millionaire spend reading and how many minutes it takes them to answer a question. Now, there are two things in this case. How many hours contestants uh, spend reading and how many minutes it takes them to answer a question. So there are two things that are changing in this, and therefore, Oh, it's not one variable, but it's actually two variable because there are two things that are changing in this. So definitely we can use a scatter plot for it. Notice that I'm very um, attached to my scatter plots. We like them. Okay, what about per D? Um, Zutroy collects information on his um, overall average and how much water he drinks in a day. So there are two things here is comparing an average and how much water he drinks in one day. So what do you think? Is this, is this one variable or two variable data? In this case, because uh, Zutro is comparing uh, his overall average to, which is a variable, to how much water he drinks in a day, which can also be changed, uh, it's a two variable graph. And uh, definitely I would use a scatter plot for that to identify. And the last one that we're going to do is uh, Garth categorizes how many minutes of music are on 
each of his CDs. Now, is this information that we can find? Medium, average, um, a mode four? And the answer is yes, yes, we can. So this is one variable that we could, um, uh, one variable data. So how can we um, uh, demonstrate it? What kind of graph can we use? Definitely a histogram. And depending on how many uh, CDs he has, see he has maybe a bar graph. There's one more thing I want to show you, and it is on Desmo. So Desmo actually can um, calculate uh, mean and uh, and median of any data, and uh, I want you to actually open up your Desmos apps, and uh, once you are in Desmo apps, I'm going to show you how to create a data set um, that is one variable again. And for one variable data set, there are specific functions in Desmos that you can use to uh, find the median and the mean. So this is the you start, start with a capital letter, and we're going to name our data set A, and we're going to start our data set with uh, square brackets. And then we can just type in some numbers, like 1, 2, 3, let's say 6, 6, 7, and 9. And I'm going to close the bracket. So now notice that it is our data set of, for one variable has seven elements. I'm going to press Enter. And now we're going to use the mean to find the average. So notice that when we finish typing the functions, uh, it changes its fonts a little bit, and then we're going to use our open bracket and just type in the uh, capital A set. Close the bracket. So notice that now we have the mean of our set. By pressing enter. And also we could find the median or the middle number uh, just by looking at the set. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and actually six should be the middle value of our set. So Type in median and type in A. Let's see if we get six. And we do. That's kind of a neat way um, to find our uh, uh, mean and median from any set. Um, okay, DISH will conclude our lesson for today. Stay tuned for the next lesson. Bye bye.